guys, Katie, welcome back to my channel. Today, I've been telling you for a while now that I want to talk about physical telling. Um, it's something that I overuse, and so it's been a tough like topic for me. I had to research some different things, and so I wanted to share that with you. I see a lot of, you know, show, don't tell, but what you're supposed to be showing is like their internal thoughts and feelings and emotions and what I rely on to show that sometimes is like oh their fist clenched oh a sweat broke out oh their heart is like racing and their nerves are tingling and like whatever and I like over rely on physical telling I think um, it's a little crutch of mine I guess when I'm trying not to be telling but it is physical telling still and it's still bad if it's only physical telling. So what I read in one of the craft books was to add the um, reasoning, the emotional layer, which is their thoughts, which I am terrible in a first draft of putting down internalization. And so um, it's usually something I have to go back in and add. And I reached out to my mentor and to um, another friend of mine to get their tips on how to be better about physical telling and like how to add in a deeper depth to it so this is kind of their ideas that I was like oh duh like I know I read these but I like never remember to put them in my own story so one of my friends suggested to do flashbacks so like if something just broke their heart maybe they go back and tell you about a time a night not tell you like flashbacks so you're shown <laughs> um, a time where their heart was broken before and maybe compare it if it's not as bad or it's worse and they wish they never had like done this thing and felt that and just kind of show that flashback show um, a little bit more about them that's helping your reader understand them a little bit more based on their past and getting how their like thoughts rationalize things and process things one of her examples which I thought was great cat I'm gonna shout you out um, my face feels hotter than the time I got a sunburn in Florida with grandpa that's a quick little extra tidbit. Instead of just saying that your face is hot or you're sweating or whatever, you add in that little bit of description that puts that reader back in like, oh, Florida, him with your grandpa. There's some backstory. You have a grandpa. You've been to Florida before. Like, <laughs> um, and just adds in like, here in Texas, it's humidity. And so I try to get that humidity across or like I can put in, you know, it wasn't as deadly as it was last year or like something or like the humidity it like really made you have heat exhaustion really fast but um like I could just add in experiences and past dealings with that thing and you'll get immersed in her a little bit better than her just struggling to breathe and um like it's a cool sweat because she doesn't have any more water to expire anymore <laughs> um that kind of thing and it tells more about their character than just what's going on in the moment and I think that's really great. I've been able to add a little bit more um, in my hashtag goals draft after this um, of just going that extra step. And it's in all the books I read. I just, sometimes I skim over those parts. Like, mm. um, but yeah, <laughs> some people don't have time for that. But it is really good. Some of my mentor's thoughts on this was swap out physical descriptors with thoughts, which is what I shared. So like when they're feeling angry, maybe they're not just like, grr, maybe they actually think think or say I'm like it would be a joy if I could flip this table and make a scene I would love to let out my pent up energy by doing this like I'm so angry and so kind of just showing that and she also said to do memories kind of like how Kat said so it'd be like I felt the same way when this feels like this but worse had I ever been so angry before and um, some of that still like the felt and feel still using the telling words but if you're putting it back in a memory you'll be showing it so she's kind of even just quick examples um, you wouldn't want to like say it exactly like that but just to um, take it a step further compare it to something else we want to use a lot of like similes and metaphors apparently that's better than just straight up telling some things do like it's fine to tell okay but if we're trying to show this stuff and get away from physical telling, these are just some examples. 
And then she was just talking about how physical descriptors can be varied, which if you have the emotional thesaurus, emotion thesaurus, um, it's really good if you're just stuck on like eyebrows, you know, brow being furrowed or shrugging. Like there's other ways to get across an emotion, which I need to remember to look at because I always forget. <laughs> but um, she was just saying, you know, instead of just saying clenched fist, go a step further. Say that your fingernails, your nails bit into your palm. Instead of just saying that you're grinding your teeth, say that your jaw is locked to keep in words that you know will hurt that person or keep in your angry like hateful words but just kind of mix up your normal body language that you tell and like go a step further and connect it to some memory or um, just further in her emotion or his emotion and that way it won't be as telling or that way it won't be like oh wow she said the same descriptor for four chapters in a row now like on every page <laughs> and what I've been doing lately to help me is because I know it's in books I've been screenshotting certain passages so that I can get more like look back on it and be like oh okay that's how they did that and I've been doing a lot more like um, purposeful uh, thinking like that as I'm reading usually I want it as an escapism and I hate the fact that my writer brain clicks on a lot especially my editor brain but um, when I come across a passage that I'm like oh dang they did good at this part I'm just screenshotting it for later um, that's especially true of my comp title books that I've been reading. I kind of take screenshots of stuff like how they dealt with the breakup or how they dealt with whatever so I can get that emotion especially oh my gosh if a book makes me cry like if something makes me like emotional I'm like okay what are they doing that's making me feel this way because it gets really hard when you're writing your own story to feel that emotion repeatedly when you've read it over and over. Um, sometimes you still get the feels, but sometimes you're just like, Ugh, whatever. <laughs> um, and so I think like getting, you know, eyes on it and asking, you know, hey, can it be more impactful? Is there too much physical telling? Is there too much telling? Um, having your critique partner or readers like kind of mention in a comment hey, maybe um, follow this up with a memory or a flashback or whatever. Um, like, seek out help if in that area if you're not well-versed in it, and um, hopefully it'll make your writing stronger. This is something that I've been having to deal with and get better at. Um, let me know down in the comments below if physical telling is one of your crutches. Um, I definitely rely on it too much, but I am trying. I think this version of Hashtag Goals is a lot stronger, so I'm excited about that. This whole journey we're on, you guys, we're just improving upon our craft and our writing draft after draft. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you did and I will see y'all in the next one.